Hello everyone, welcome back to What If Izuku Was a Leveling Hero? Be sure to like share and check out the author, AC1 Ermai. Again the author's first language isn't English. I can only catch so many spelling mistakes. Also, this story is not yet completed, so this will be season 1 of this. So, be sure to check out. The links in the description down below. And with that let's begin. Chapter 51 Several days and weeks had passed. The Hunter Bureau and Hero Association have issued announcements regarding the upcoming match. Thanks to that the news portals were filled with this topic all week until finally, the day of the competition arrived. The match was held at the Dagoba National Stadium. And as a result, many people filled the stadium area to watch the match since early morning. Tickets to watch the match also sold out quickly. It seems that people are looking forward to this game. Even the crowds rival the crowds at the annual UA Sports Festival. Other than the spectators and reporters, several contestants had already gathered in the meeting room since early morning. Be it on the side of hunters or heroes. The people who had gathered included Rabbit Hero Mirko, Flame Hero Endeavor, Wing Hero Hawks, Ninja Hero Edshot, and of course Hero No One All Might. Meanwhile, on the hunter side, there are Moonlight Guild Master Yumiko Aoi, Arashi Guild Master Tatsumi Fujishima, Dawn Guild Mater Ikaru Hirodo, and his Vice Guild Master Izuku, as well as the newest S-rank hunter who received re-evaluation not long ago, Tadaroki Toya. There was tension between the two sides, considering what had happened between some of the participants. A few hours earlier, Izuku and Toya were still at the dormitory preparing to leave for the stadium. They weren't with Ikiru since he still had some work to do, so they would go separately. Izuku finished first, and waited for Toya near the car that would take them. Not long after, Toya arrived wearing the coat that Izuku gave him the other day. As expected, it suits you well. Shut up. The item that Toya was wearing was one that Izuku ordered a few days ago using Naga-type monster scales as the base material. And a rank mana stone, Izuku made a special order for it. Moreover, with the effect of making it immune to fire, and the effect of protecting against physical attacks, it was already categorized as an A-rank item. Let's go before we're late. Toya and Izuku got in the car, and on Izuku's instructions, the driver drove them to the town of Dagoba, where the match was being held. It took quite a while because there was a traffic jam near the stadium. While waiting for Toya's phone to ring, he then opened it to see who the message had come from. Izuku also approached him out of curiosity. From whom? Fayumi-chan. Really? What's in it? She said, she and my brother will come to watch at the stadium. Mom also seems to be watching on TV. Oh great isn't it? Your family will come to support you. I don't know, I'm not sure about that, how about you? Won't your family also come, because that person is also participating in this competition? It would be better if you didn't mention it. As their conversation ended, the two of them arrived at the Dagoba National Stadium. In front of the stadium, many journalists had gathered since morning. Izuku got out of the car first followed by Toya, shortly after they were immediately surrounded by a crowd of reporters. Izuku was quite overwhelmed at dealing with them, but he did pretty well. Meanwhile, Toya skillfully slips through the crowd while covering his face with his hood. Even though it took him a long time, Izuku managed to enter the building. There, he saw Toya who was playing on his cell phone while waiting for him. He then approached him with a slightly irritated expression. Oh Izuku, good job out there. What good job? How could you leave me there? I just don't want to deal with them. Izuku looked at Toya in disbelief. But soon his gaze shifted outside again, as the crowd went into an uproar. All Might. Wow. All Might please look here. The people who gathered were even more excited by the arrival of the No One Hero. All attention immediately turned to him. All Might, who had just gotten out of the car, received the greeting with a laugh and the big smile that he always had. Ha ha ha. Thank you for the greeting. All Might, who will you face in this match? Well, whoever it is, I will give my best. 
Then which do you think will win, hunter or hero? Whoever wins will give their best during the match. In addition, both sides are fighting for the safety and security of citizens. Is that so? Then good luck in this match. Of course. All Might answered with a big smile and gave a thumbs up at the camera. People who saw his signature smile immediately cheered and cheered him on. This was different from the people who stared at him with cold eyes. Since hearing All Might's name mentioned, Izuku looked at him with a cold gaze. He didn't say anything and just stared at All Might who kindly greeted his fans. That person has arrived. Yes. Looking closely at that person emits an imposing aura. Yes. After giving his last greetings to the journalists, All Might entered the building which was filled with several staff members who were on duty there. The staff there greeted him and All Might returned his usual smile. But that smile immediately turned into a stiff smile as soon as he saw the two teenagers staring at him. Both of them wore coats with the emblem of the sword and setting sun. All Might recognizes the crest, because it is the guild crest that was always broadcast on TV. But what made him stiff was the chill that one of them was emitting. Even if it was just a glimpse, All Might felt it. As if feeling deja vu, he felt he had felt the same feeling. His thoughts broke when he heard footsteps approaching him. All Might could see the black-haired young man walking towards him leaving his partner, who had a surprised expression on his face. The young man walked up to All Might and held out his hand to him with a friendly smile on the young man's face. Nice to see you again, All Might-san. I'm the vice guild leader of the Dawn Guild, Izuku. All Might's mind was spinning a little when he saw the youth's blue eyes. For some reason, those eyes felt familiar to him. As he was looking through his memories, a bell rang in his head, and the memory of him meeting a mysterious young man while chasing a sludge villain came back to him. Ah, you were the young man from back then. Well, to think you were a hunter, plus you were also the vice guild master of a large guild. I'm glad you still remember me. It's an honor to be in the same competition as the No One Hero. So you're taking part in the competition too? Then I'll be looking forward to your performance, ha ha ha. All Might laughed while patting Izuku on the shoulder. From the outside, they seemed to be exchanging friendly greetings. But inside Izuku was a cold feeling that he was trying so hard to hide behind his usual poker smile. The people don't notice this except for Izuku's only comrade who is there. At first, Toya was surprised by Izuku, who suddenly walked up to All Might and became even more confused by his attitude of speaking kindly to All Might despite the expression he had previously made. But after seeing All Might's actions and Mizuku's clenched hands that were almost bleeding, Toya finally realized the meaning of his actions. It seems Izuku intends to test whether he will be able to control himself in this match, and also test whether All Might still recognizes him or not regardless of how his appearance changes. Ha ha ha. Nice to meet you again young man by the way, are you here alone? Aren't you coming with your family or friends maybe? Hearing the words family from All Might, Izuku's smile immediately collapsed and was replaced by a cold face. He didn't expect to hear those words leave him, even though the person standing in front of him was one of them. No, I'm here with my friend. I see. Dad. While they were talking a voice came from behind All Might. They could see two female figures coming towards them. One of them was a girl with blonde hair and green eyes, who was the same age as Izuku, and a woman who was in her forties with green hair and eyes. Izuku's eyes widened as he saw their faces. Izuku knows these two people very well. How could he not? The two of them are the people who turned Izuku's childhood into a silent abyss. His twin sister Izumi Yagi and his mother Inko Yagi. Izumi, who saw her father immediately ran to hug her father, while her mother kept smiling seeing the interaction between father and son. All Might caught Izumi and hugged her warmly while smiling at her, ignoring Izuku who was beside him. Dad, I and mom will support dad, so win in the match later. Hearing my daughter support me of course I have to work hard. Izumi smiled when she heard her father's answer. 
and soon she saw Izuku standing behind them. Previously, Izumi had also seen her father talking to someone. Izumu looked at the person. She thought he had a handsome face that looked somehow familiar. The confused Izumi tilted her head and asked her father, Dad, who is he? Ah, he's the vice guild master of the Dawn Guild, young Izuku. Come greet him. He's the same age as you, by the way. Ah, uh, hello. Izuku. Why does he have the same name as Deku? And what is this familiar feeling? Hello, nice to meet you. It took Izuku time to control his expression. He could barely contain the anger that was about to explode, and the result was a distorted smile on his face. Izumi felt strange seeing this smile on Izuku's face, but what surprised her even more was that Izuku's eyes were emitting a chilling cold purple light. Izumi almost choked when their eyes met. She had never seen someone with such cold eyes in her life, let alone someone her age. There might be one, but it was a long time ago, and it was an old memory she was trying to forget. For some reason, the face of her deceased twin brother, that she wanted to forget so badly appeared in her mind again, and overlapped with the face of the person standing in front of her. But she immediately dismissed the idea by shaking her head, trying to erase the thought from her mind. No, that can't be, that person is dead, and they don't even look alike. Are you okay, Izumi? Seeing her daughter's strange behavior, Inko asked her how she was doing. Why, yes, I'm fine. Are you sure your face looks a little pale? Really? Maybe because there are too many people here, ahahaha. <laughs> you better rest if you're sick. All Might also added that he is quite worried about his only daughter. Seeing the family's warm interaction, Izuku's expression became completely cold. Even so, the turmoil of anger within him did not subside. It was evident where the leak was coming from and his shadow that had been shaking. Izuku's shadow soldiers can also sense their master's wrath and are ready at any moment to destroy the cause of the master's anger. But Izuku has given orders not to move until he tells them to. Seeing Izuku's condition, who seemed ready to commit murder at any time, Toya couldn't help but interrupt their conversation. Um, excuse me. You are? I'm Izuku's friend. It looks like someone is looking for my friend. If we're allowed, then please excuse us. Oh, of course. Looks like I held it in for too long. Sorry for that, young Izuku. Let's have a fair match in the arena later. This time All Might offered his hand to Izuku. Seeing that outstretched hand, Izuku couldn't help but smile sarcastically. Of course let's fight fair. When their hands touched, at a glance All Might could see the shadow of death standing right behind the young man in front of him, which made the hairs on his neck goosebumps because of the cold he felt. That shadow didn't go away even after Izuku and his friend left them. What a terrifying young man. Chapter 52 Toya takes Izuku to a quiet alley near the stadium. Toya released his grip on Izuku and took a few steps back. As Toya's grip was released, the killing intent that Izuku was holding suddenly emerged. His body was enveloped in cold purple mana that was filled with killing intent. Red blood slowly dripped from Izuku's tightly clenched fists. His fist hit the ground creating a large crack there. Toya, who saw this, became a bit worried. He had never seen Izuku this angry since the high org incident that temporarily paralyzed Ikiru. H. Hey, Izuku calmed down a bit. It seemed the words didn't reach Izuku as his killing intent didn't die in the slightest. Currently, Toya is worried that if Izuku's anger continues, there will be a disaster in the tournament. Toya then grabbed Izuku's shoulder and shook his body quite strongly. Hey, get hold of yourself. Slowly, the killing aura that enveloped Izuku slowly subsided. His rough breathing also gradually calmed down. Are you calm yet? A little. Izuku started to stand up as his condition stabilized a bit. Toya, who saw this, couldn't help but feel both sympathy and anger towards the Izuku's family. His sympathies for them made monsters like his enemies and those who deserted him. Let's go back before everyone looks for us. Sure. Izuku and Toya returned to the stadium. 
and they can see that Ikiru is already there, looking for them. As soon as he saw them, he immediately approached them. Where have you been? The event is about to start, and you are going somewhere as you please. Sorry about that. We have some things to take care of, Toya. Ikiru narrowed his eyes when it was Toya who answered instead of Izuku. He then looked at Izuku who had been silent since earlier. It was quite strange to see him silent like that. But due to the circumstances, he had no other choice but to let it slide and rush them to the meeting room. In the meeting room, people had already gathered. Those in the room turned their gazes on Izuku's group. Competition could be seen in their eyes, especially the hero bunny that was there. She stared at their group, as if finding some interesting prey. Mirko, who had heard some rumors regarding hunters, couldn't help but be curious about them, especially the Dawn Guild, which was at the top of the rankings. She was curious how strong the person who was called the Guild Master and the Vice Guild Master who was often seen in the news. And after seeing them in person, her expectations were not wrong. They are all strong, especially those two kids. Her gaze fell on the two people standing behind Ikaru. Despite the dark expressions they made from the moment they entered the room, the auras they gave off were quite extraordinary. Especially the Vice Guild Master, he had a thin presence with footsteps so light that one wouldn't notice him if they didn't see him. Even Edshot, who is also a hero who specializes in infiltration and sneaking is surprised by how thin a presence Izuku has. Izuku's group entered the room and quickly headed to their seats. But it seemed they weren't the last to arrive. The door opened again and someone walked in. A large figure whose body was covered in flames walked into the room. Sorry for being late. Endeavor walked in giving off intimidation with just his gaze. The others also saw it, but no one gave any significant reaction. If there was someone from Hunter's side, one of them would look at him with killing intent in his eyes. Toya glared as soon as he saw that person. A bit of killing intent leaked from him, but was restrained by Izuku's hand gripping his shoulder, as if telling him to stay calm. Some of Endeavor's acquaintances greeted him lightly, especially Hawks. Yo, Endeavor-san, you're a bit late. Hawks. After greeting his fellow heroes, Endeavor felt the icy gazes that had been staring at him since just now. He then saw the owner's gaze and was surprised to see his face. White hair with the same color, and I gaze as him. The young face he remembered back then had now grown into an adult. A young man with cold eyes and a crooked smile on his face. Endeavor was frozen. For a moment he forgot how to breathe when he saw the face of his son, who he thought was dead in front of him. Toya, who saw this, could not hide his smile. Unlike a person, Endeavor recognized his son's face right away, even though his son should have been dead long ago. T. Toya. Endeavor said the name in a weak tone. He still couldn't believe his dead son was in front of him and still alive. Not only that, but his son was also in front of him as a hunter. While Endeavor was still lost in thought, a voice sounded in his mind. Long time, no sea father. Surprised by the voice that suddenly appeared in his head, Endeavor glanced at Toya with a surprised face. He never recalled his son having telepathic abilities apart from his fire quirk. No need to be surprised like that. There are still many surprises that you will see later. I look forward to when I destroy you in the arena, Endeavor. Hearing Toya's declaration of war, Endeavor couldn't help but widen his eyes. The first thing his son said after a long absence was a declaration of war. Hawks who saw Endeavor was silent did not move. He approached him. Endeavor-san, are you all right? Endeavor came to his senses as he heard Hawk's voice calling him. Ah, oh, yeah. He realized that Endeavor was staring at a certain person. Following his gaze, Hawks glanced at the white-haired man who looked slightly older than himself and was staring at Endeavor with a distorted smile on his face. Hawks tried to remember any pertinent information he had about that person. If he recalled correctly, the man's name was Todoroki Toya, and he was a member of the Dawn Guild, and had recently become an S-ranked person. That guy has the same name as Endeavor. Maybe. Hawk's thoughts were interrupted 
as the door opened again and several men in suits entered the room. In the front row was a beige-haired man who had tired eyes and slightly messy hair. The man stepped forward and stood at the podium in the room, followed by the rest of them who standing behind him. Well then, we can begin. Before that, my name was Mira Yokimaru of the Heroic Public Safety Commission. Nice to meet you all. Ah, I'm tired. I really want to sleep. People were amazed and amazed at Mira, who didn't hide his grievances. But regardless, he continued what he said with his nearly collapsing condition like that. For the heroes and hunters who have come, we thank you for coming. E. Let me explain the course of events. Each hero and hunter will be drawn, which will decide who will fight who and also the battle arena. The draw will be made while in the arena. If you have any questions please ask now. Regardless of how Mira gave his explanation, everyone was quite satisfied with his explanation being to the point. Not long after, the participants were herded into the arena. Meanwhile, cheers rang out from the direction of the arena. It seemed that when the participants received the briefing, the event had already opened. The master of ceremonies had opened the program beforehand and prepared to call out the names of the participants. All right, everyone. I will start calling the participants who will be fighting today. After hearing what the host said, Mira, who was guiding the participants, turned back to them. Please enter according to the name called. Now let's welcome, from the hunter's side, the Arashi Guild Master, the Wind Sorcerer Tatsumi Fujishima. The crowd started cheering again when the first name was called. Tatsumi also stepped forward towards the arena while waving his hand at the audience. Next, our beautiful archer hunter and guild master of the Moonlight Guild, Yumiko Aoi. Just like Tatsumi, Yumiko also walked towards the arena, but with a straight face as if she wasn't interested ignoring the shouts of the men in the audience. Next, the guild master of the number one guild in all of Japan Dawn Guild, Ikiru Hiroto. Ikiru walked into the arena with a warm smile on his face, hiding his tension. Next, the youngest participant in this competition, who's also the vice guild master of the Dawn Guild, Izuku. The atmosphere of the stadium changed as soon as Izuku entered the arena. Some people started whispering as soon as they saw a teenager walking into the arena. Even though Izuku was taller than most of his age, he looked nothing more than a kid who had just graduated from high school. Even so, there were some sounds of screaming young girls screaming his name. Izuku ignored it and kept walking and stood next to Ikiru. Because the atmosphere was a little awkward, the host continued to call the next participant. Wii um. And next, the last participant from Hunter's side, the one who recently obtained an S rank, who was also part of the number one guild, Todoroki Toya. Just like when Izuku walked in, several people whispered when they heard Todoroki's name being called. The onlookers stared at the white-haired youth, who walked in feeling a bit horrified. How could it not be when Toya walked in without hiding his killing intent? He then stood beside Izuku. Izuku, who had felt the murderous aura from his friend earlier, whispered to Toya, At least lower your killing intent. You made the temperature drop drastically. Be quiet. While the two of them were whispering, the host continued the program by calling the other side. One by one the names of the heroes were called out in order of their rank. Starting from the rabbit hero, Mirko, ninja hero, Edshot, wing hero, Hawks, and the No. Two Fire Hero, Endeavor. When their names were called, their fans immediately gave support and cheers to their favorite heroes. But the excitement was incomparable when the name of hero number one who was also the symbol of peace was mentioned. Now, let's welcome the symbol of peace that we are all proud of. All Might. Whoa, All Might. The crowd immediately became excited as soon as All Might entered the arena with his signature smile and laugh. Ha ha ha. Thank you for the greeting. Now, it's time to pull the lottery. Behind the host was a large screen displaying a blank list. Then in front of her, there are two boxes, containing numbers that will determine each opponent. 
Both sides please come forward and draw lots respectively. The numbers listed will be the order of the matches. Following what the presenter said, each participant took the number that was in the box. So the sequence that appears is as follows. Ed Shot vs. Tatsumi Fujishima. Murko vs. Yumiko Aoi. Hawks vs. Ikiru Hiroto. Endeavor vs. Todoroki Toya. And lastly, All Might vs. Izuku. Others might think that the two of them were having bad luck, having to face hero number one and number two. But this situation was exactly what they expected. As if fate had played a trick on them, the two boys had to go against their father, staring at the list displayed on the screen. Killing intent radiated from their eyes, along with a cold gleam emanating from their eyes. The two of them had made up their minds to make the person who made them suffer pay for what they had done. And with that, I'll see you all in the next part. For those who are interested, we have a Discord down below. Be sure to aim for the stars, drink plenty of water, and for us to cause chaos. With that take care until next we see each other again.